then decided to walk out without paying. He faces misdemeanor charges of petty theft. The hearing begins rather cordially. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your name, please? Hello, Your Honor. State your name. Mr. Green. Can you tell me your name? Boy Green Man. But Greenman, whose bond is set at $250, listens closely when Judge Carly Wish asks the state if they have a better offer that might get him out of any jail time. You were arrested for petty theft. Did you find probable cause? Uh, Miss Kenny Swanson, did you have an offer? I did not, Your Honor. No offer? Is that mm -hmm. due to the out-of-state criminal history? Yes, Your Honor. Prior to today's hearing, Greenman was charged with tampering with evidence in another case, which potentially elevates his current misdemeanor charge. And Judge Wish is about to break the news. So, Mr. Greenman, um, you have prior history out of state, and so the state may enhance this offense to a felony based on your prior, so I can't uh, do anything with your case today. I am going to appoint the public defender for you. You're That's f***ing horse You do whatever the f*** you want, Excuse me? My name is Mr. Greenman. I'm the federal witness of the United States federal government. I demand some respect, you Let's get a damn round of all y'all f***ing and figure out what you're doing. All right, doing. he can, he can be removed once y'all get him out. Now, This is Ronnie O'Neill. He is a double murder suspect in Riverview, Florida. If you think I'm here to play around with y'all, God damn it on that! O'Neill was 29 when he fatally shot his then-girlfriend Kenyatta Barron. Following this, he murdered their own daughter by striking her multiple times with a hatchet. She was only 9 years old. O'Neill also stabbed their 8-year-old son before pouring gasoline all over the house and setting it on fire. O'Neill was arrested upon fleeing the burning house. Arrest, O'Neill was psychologically cleared to represent himself in court. During the trial, he cross-examined his now 11-year-old son, who he stabbed, to which the son explained everything that happened. It's good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Did I hurt you that night of this incident? Yes. I did. And how did I hurt you? He stabbed me. O'Neill also accused the prosecution of fabricating evidence. Because he's playing a fraudulent damn recording of me beating Kenyatta Barron. I did kill Kenyatta Barron. After O'Neill was found guilty at his sentencing, the judge went on to say this was the worst case she's ever seen. This is the worst case ever, ever in my life and I have seen some horrors. He also stated that he was not sorry for what he did. I am not sorry for something I didn't do and I am not sorry for the things I did do. O'Neill was given a total of three life sentences plus 90 years without parole. And for O'Neill's son, he was adopted by the detective who cared for him the night of the murders. Attorney Anna Valentini is delivering her closing argument when Rosales, through a translator, vehemently objects. <laughs> Seemingly insulted by being labeled a child molester, Rosales grabs a keyboard and smashes the computer monitor on the defense table. Two officers attempt to restrain him, slamming him to the floor. Meanwhile, Judge Deborah Nelson seems as though she's struggling to open a door. So she calls for some help. But Rosales is not done fighting.
Finally, with the help of additional officers, Rosales is cuffed and then carried out of the courtroom. Everybody calm down. We'll take it to the recess.